Sex work and the question of how the South African legal system should respond to sex work and related activities has been the subject of considerable debate for quite some time. Yesterday, Justice and Correctional Services Minister Ronald Lamola unpacked the Sexual Offences and Related Matters Amendment Bill of 2022, which seeks to repeal legislation that criminalises sex work. The bill was approved for publishing and public comment by Cabinet at the end of November. The bill deals only with the decriminalisation and doesn't regulate the sex industry, which the Justice Minister said would be addressed at a later date. Currently, the bill contains a number of measures, including an onus on the justice system to provide protection, safety and justice for survivors of gender-based violence and to hold perpetrators accountable for their actions. Citizens have until the 31st of January to comment on the bill. Well, for some reaction, we're now joined uh, by sex work survivor and human rights activist, uh, Mickey Meiji. Thanks so much indeed for joining us and uh, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. I'm sorry I'm standing on my side or I look like I'm on my side because <laughs> I'm inside a vehicle. Okay. Thanks for your time <laughs> anyway. Uh, I all right, so tell us your yeah. initial thoughts about this uh, amendment bill. Um, when you heard that it's uh, looking towards decriminalizing uh, sex work, so what, what, what thoughts come to mind for you? First and foremost, disastrous. I'm looking at the country and I'm seeing disaster. I'm seeing disaster because uh, I've seen uh, part of the discussions that have been going on was that um, decriminalizing or legalization of the sex trade or the prostitution system is actually going to deter uh, or, or, you know, you reduce a lot of crime. Now, I'm asking myself and I'm asking you, uh, Mr. Ndoro, or Ndoho, I'm not sure. In my culture, we pronounce that with, with a ho, but yeah. I don't know. I'm asking you, are the men that are killing prostituted persons doing so because they are retaliating against the law? Or are they doing so because it's in their nature mm. as men practicing the purchase of sex? Okay, so, so this is a conversation that yeah. we need to have. All right, so perhaps maybe people might answer that by saying that part of the reason why this abuse can carry on is that the police are not protecting sex workers and are part of the problem. If it becomes a decriminalized, the police are then obliged to take care of sex workers and um, they themselves would be brought to book for the work, the wrong that they do. My brother, I'm smiling because I'm laughing at this thought because it's if we look at domestic violence, how have the police been able to make sure that that doesn't happen? Mm. When, when we decriminalize, we should also ask ourselves the question that, are we going to allocate a police officer to guard each and every single so-called sex worker? I don't use that terminology. I use prostituted person. And this stems from the fact that I know that everyone that I've interacted with uh, you, for many years, more than a decade now, I've never come across one person who identifies personally, not talking about the media, mm -hmm. but personally between myself and themselves as a sex worker. So I'm, I'm asking, are we saying that we are going to have uh, a police officer allocated to every single person that is selling sex to guard them. Yeah. Because if we are saying so, I I have a I have a counter question yeah. to it, the it's government unlikely. of South Africa. Would, it's unlikely. No, but would we rather would we then rather spend a lot of money on condom distribution, yeah. lubricant distribution? and then having police officers guarding people instead of 
emancipating people economically to be able to thrive themselves yeah. in other industries that do not require yeah. the state to take an involvement. This is a question that we need to set ourselves because are we willing as taxpayers, as the country, to say that what we want is that people should do prostitution, we don't mind paying taxes uh, that will pay for their condoms, lubricants, as well as the justice system and straining. Yeah. I mean, because the, those cases are not the only cases. We also have cases as a general population. We've got gender-based violence, we've got domestic violence, and we've got general and general crime and violence that we have. Mm-hmm. So are we willing to just do that and, and remain as people that are reactive instead of being re- proactive and emancipate and invest in the women of this country, in particular, the face of those who are poor, black, and disadvantaged, either from South Africa or from neighboring countries. That's one thing that we need to ask ourselves. Mickey, I'm just wondering um, if, for example, the, um, a sex worker is uh, abused physically, um, is uh, violently abused, It's very difficult if you are a sex worker and breaking the law to go and get justice. But once it's decriminalized, you'll have access to justice that perhaps wasn't there before, you don't think? No, my brother, you people have been told uh, and have been sold this lie. Let me tell you from lived experiences myself, they, there has never been a situation where I've gone to the police station and I've had to disclose the kind of work that I do. Or when I've gone to the hospital and I've had to disclose the kind of work that I do. So those things are irrelevant, yeah. but they are being used by the pro-prostitution lobbyists who are for the, 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 the pimps and the brothel keepers. Let me tell you, my brother, if you listened to our brother, uh, Minister Lamola, yesterday, when you were speaking, and you listened to his deputy, um, uh, Deputy Minister John Jeffries, if you listen to them, this is an end route. We are not just ending with decriminalization. We are decriminalizing to, in future, to legalize so that we are able to then, as capitalists, and I'm saying we in solidarity as a country, as capitalists, to benefit from the sale, the exploitation, and the buying of these women. All right, so... The it, idea is yeah. so that we decriminalize today, we decriminalize today, and then we see that it's unrowdy, and then we decide that we want to regulate. And when we regulate, that's when the taxes and everything else comes in, and that's when the state benefits. One thing that I would like to say tonight is that humans are for sale in South Africa. All right, so let's get a definitive position from you. Are you saying that sex work should be banned, stopped, and we should find ways to get girls and boys off the streets? I am saying that prostitution, not sex work, because I don't know what that is. I do not recognize it as work. Um, I am saying that the the prostitution system should be treated equally with an equal um, urgency and importance similar to that of gender-based violence, because it is one of the more worst forms of men's violence against women. Men who purchase sex, if you were to hear or to see and witness the things that they are requesting from the women that they are buying, you, you would be distraught. We know of women in Dubai who go and eat women, um, human feces. It has never happened mm-hmm. in our lifetime. It, it's not a normal thing. 
So what I am saying is that the government should decriminalize the so-called sex workers, which I call the, the bought, sold, and, and, and exploited, the prostituted person, be it that they are male, female, uh, transgender, lesbian, gay, and etc. Let them be decriminalized. But we have no reason and no evidence to point at us to the fact that pimps, brothel keepers, and sex buyers are murdering and are violating the human rights of prostituted persons simply because they are criminalized as well. There is no mm. basis on that. So are you saying that your fear is by um, decriminalizing and almost legalizing the industry that the evils of uh, the industry right now will just multiply and be protected by the law? Yes, of course, my brother. One simple exam uh, example is that you can come to my room, and I'm not saying you as in you, <laughs> but I'm saying you as a man would be found in my hotel room. Like right now, I'm traveling and I'm in Gauteng. And you come to my hotel room, maybe something intrigues or whatever happens, then you decide to rape me or to force yourself. And the next thing that you do, after you've done that, you place money on my table or on pedestal, on my bed, you, you name it, whatever, 1,000 rand. And when the police call in the morning to say that you've raped somebody, you are easily able to say that, but I purchased that person. And one of those notes that you would have left there might be marked, actually. Mm. So we are reaching a situation where we will make it difficult for people who, who are fighting against general sexual exploitation, including rape, to be able to fight this cause if we are saying that prostitution or the purchase of sex is a legal thing. Because the perpetrators we know are going to hide behind this thing to say, I bought her. I, I didn't rape her. I paid her for sex. Mickey, what then can the law say? Mickey, thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight. Uh, thank you for um, giving us some really good insights about uh, uh, what is happening out there and uh, how this bill might affect the situation for uh, prostitutes and sex workers, whichever word that people want to use. Thanks so much indeed for joining us. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much for having me, but I want to point out one thing because you said whichever word that people want to use, the legal terminology right now in South Africa, there is nothing called sex work. The, the prostitution system is criminalized. It's right. criminalized in its entirety. So you, you, you are not obliged to say sex worker or it, sex work. It is prostitution. You, it, and I, prostitution. I, I call it It is the system of the prostitution and it's a prostitute and it's prostitution. You are right to do so, my brother. Because again, Minister uh, uh, Lamula, uh, you know, misled the country yesterday when he spoke. A, a whole minister of the deputy, I mean, the, the Department of Justice, for him to actually address the country and say sex work when he knows that there is nothing of the such in this country. What we have is a criminalization, a more than 50 year old um, bill or even law that says we criminalize prostitution. He even said in his own words that it has not been able to, the current law has not been able to eradicate, okay, some, something to that effect, but to end prostitution, nor has it been effective. Now he needs to get to the cuts of things. And I thought he was a young man.
who would understand 2022, 2023. But he seems to be a person who lives in 1989. I, I, don't, I don't know. And I'm saying this lies, and I'm not afraid, because this is what I got from him. He knows that the, the law of the country says that there is nothing called sex work, we are currently in a criminalized situation where we criminalize the purchase, the buying, the third parties, the solicitation, okay. the pimping and brothel keeping in oh, this nice. well in this country. And yet okay. he goes around saying sex work, which is a misleading okay. or a confusing thing to the public. Mickey, thank you so much. Thank you for giving us your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, all right, that's uh, Mickey uh, Meji, who's a sex work survivor, who says there's no such thing as sex work. It's prostitution and prostitutes that's got pimps, brothel keepers, and she's very worried that uh, the decriminalization of uh, uh, prostitution, sex work, all it will do is exacerbate the problem and uh, create a bigger and more problematic industry. It's a very complex issue, but the public do have an opportunity to comment on this until the 31st of January.